So I hung out with John and we, and actually we ended up drinking champagne on Lee's anniversary of his death. And uh, we ended up drinking champagne and two o'clock in the morning, she gave me Lee Wolf's dual underwear. Ah, <laughs> underwear. I have his long johns. No way. <laughs> Away. I have a, <laughs> well, Joan, I got him. She said, you're tall. She went and got him because she was like, what am I going to do with all this stuff? That was Lorianne Murphy with a hilarious Joan Wolf story. Fishing stories and Belize today on the Wet Fly Swing Fly Fishing Show. Welcome to the Wet Fly Swing Fly Fishing Show, where you discover tips, tricks, and tools from the leading names in fly fishing today. We'll help you on your fly fishing journey with classic stories covering steelhead fishing, fly tying, and much more. Hey, how's it going today? Thanks for stopping by the Fly Fishing Show. I want to give a quick shout out to James Gibson, one of our newest supporters uh, of the Wet Fly Swing Member Society. If you want to support this podcast, head over to wetflyswing.com slash members and join for as low as $4.99 per month. This helps us bring a lot more content your way. I want to thank you in advance if you're already a, uh, a member. Uh, I really appreciate that. Lorianne Murphy, who has been mentioned many, many times on this podcast from guests, uh, is on today to share her story. We discover how Lorianne started in the Yellowstone area uh, before eventually becoming the first female guide in Belize. We get some tips for your next saltwater trip as well and hear about her big upcoming trips uh, this, this next year with real women. Before we get started, let's take a quick break for a word from our sponsors. Angler's Coffee roasts a full range of coffees with one goal in mind, delivering excellent coffee to every single angler. And I'm one of those anglers who's been loving Angler's Coffee. Great tasting, robust, and good to go. They just released a new subscription program, and you can get 20% off this box and all products at anglerscoffee.com. Just use the coupon code WETFLYSWING at checkout to get 20% off of great coffee today. That's anglerscoffee.com. In today's world of mass-produced products, Stonefly Nets has reclaimed the tradition of handcrafted care with their custom wood landing nets. Stonefly's goal is to create a unique custom classic wood net that are second to none in quality and can be customized for that little extra touch. Please head over to wetflyswing.com slash stonefly to get your custom net today. That's wetflyswing.com slash stonefly to get started right now. Get ready for an infectious personality. So without further ado, here is Lorianne Murphy from realwomenflyfishing.com. How's it going, Lorianne? All right. It's going great. Happy to be talking with you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for coming on. This has been, it's actually, you don't know behind the scenes, but this has been a long time coming. I've got, you know, we're approaching 200 episodes, so we've been going quite a while, but, um, you know, your name has popped up. Uh, probably more than maybe anybody else from my guests. You know, I just had Tom uh, Tom Rowland on recently, and he. Oh, mentioned- Tommy! I yeah. know, and you had Max and Rogers and Wanda Tate, Wanda. Hicks. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and Wanda. Yeah, Wanda mentioned and just a number of people, and it's. So we're going to get into some of that, I guess, um, you know, and we're also going to talk a little about Belize because that's a real hot topic these days for you know, obviously for you and for me um, and a lot and some people out there. So. But look, take me back, take me back, go to, you know, as far as how you got into fly fishing, how did that, how'd that all get started? Oh, boy, boy. Okay. Um, well, let's see. I was a nurse in Seattle and working really hard. And um, I always had fishing was always in our family. I'm the oldest of seven children. Uh, my grandpa used to fly fish. My uncle Jim, avid, avid um, trout fisher. And I just told you he turned 90 there in Portland. and. Um, just a lot of great influences. And then, you know, I just thought, oh, okay. I had an opportunity to um, go fish the Deschutes for steelhead. And it was just dumb luck that I caught one, landed one, and that was it. And at the time I was reading Joseph Campbell and follow your bliss. And, you know, I just really, I really did it. And uh, so I uprooted from Seattle to Jackson and I was going to be director of public health there, but ended up starting a home health and hospice program for the little hospital in Driggs. Teton Valley Hospital it was 13 bed hospital then. And then I met a lot of the locals that own property right there at Teton River and Bitch Creek and saved a few lives, got a lot of uh, <laughs> private access. And then um, 
I ended up meeting a man I married, Gary Beebe, and we were married 13 years. I met him. I met him there, and he had uh, he told me about the Orvis Guy Rendezvous, and so I went to the Orvis Guy Rendezvous, and I was with 16 guys at in um, Livingston, Montana, at Chico Hot Springs, and um, it was just I was surrounded by just a bunch of really great guys and. And uh, Vern was always giving me a hard time. He's he's the one that started the e-log program, Vern Bressler. And so he he I was late and had a sage rod and hard wheel and, <laughs> and he said you're going to take out the chairman. And so anyway, I I took out Lee Perkins and then we became very very good friends. And I re- remember receiving my first five weight at post office and Driggs and just. You know, just a lot of wonderful things happen. And we just turned 93 last November. Oh, wow. I know. And, um, you know, he bought my me my first shotgun when I turned 40. <laughs> I mean, just, you know, we've just been great, great friends. And so in my life, I've just been so fortunate that fly fishing has, you know, brought this amazing community, which um, I'm, I'm really appreciating right now during the yeah. – weirdness time i'm just boy i just feel so blessed so yeah so i've been guiding i've been guiding 30 years um drift boat you know beat myself up pretty good joan wolf told me i would and <laughs> <laughs> and then uh i started guiding here at least i'm in san pedro right now um talking to you from amberness key and uh i started guiding here as well and now i'm fortunate enough to have my own um, tour operator's license and a guide team. So I don't have to beat myself up so much, but I sure enjoy it. And, um, but I'm not guiding, not really guiding anymore. I'm more, I have two businesses I'm running. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love the story that you start out of the Deschutes. Could you take us to, do you remember that first steelhead pretty well? Well, I do. And, um, Bruce Schwartz and John Schwartz were two orthopods there in the Dalles, and they're also fiddle players. And um, so we we used to play music together. And anyway, they lured me down there, and I do remember because you know, oftentimes at four o'clock in the morning, I felt like we were going to fall off a cliff going into these spots, and um, you can't. And so you know, it's all about finding a good spot. And so I just I remember just entering the water and they of course left immediately and went off and did their own fishing and they were downstream from me. And, um, you know, I was a mess. I just couldn't get, you know, I remember just feeling completely frustrated with the whole thing. I remember sitting down, like taking forever, having a blood knot take forever. And, and then I just remember this just amazing swing and connection and, um, you know, there it was really yeah. nice, beautiful hen. And so, you know, that, that was it. And for me, that anadromous fish thing is, is just beyond cool in connection. And I really hope we can get our little fishes back out in that Pacific ocean to feed the fish. That's right. That's right. <laughs> no, it's interesting. And, and this was after you hooked that steel after you had been in, um, in Jackson, yeah, well, was it- and I was, yeah, I was fishing. You know, I'd go over to the Yakima River and, and fish, and I'd fish out Puget Sound um, for the sea run cuts. That was fun, and um, you know, just just that whole connection. But uh, it was just a turning point in my life, right around thirty one, I guess. And and I just I made the move. I said I just want to move right to where it's happening. So I knew I wanted to be in the Jackson Hole area for for fishing which is amazing yeah. the snake river system is amazing so it's still a connection right from that's right <laughs> yeah a lot further up exactly yeah a lot further up and fewer i guess fewer steelhead few, uh, fewer anadromous fish that's cool so okay and you know i want to also dig in in a sec here dig into belize i but i just want to touch on again that background because you know like i said we've you know your names come up we've talked to a number of guests over the years that have told the story of the jackson but but what was it what, why did you know you know jackson as compared to say heading over to um oh, anywhere else you could have gone like colorado why did you have a connection there uh i i well i did have a connection there i had a, a boyfriend there oh there you go yeah <laughs> <laughs> so that i was like and it sure is pretty around here this is great and um so you know that that kept me in the area for sure 
And I also think, you know, like when you were first, my first response though, before the boyfriend was, um, I, I was reading a lot. I read a lot, fly rod reel, fly fisherman, you know, I, and so all those stories, I, I just, I went, okay, you know, that's me. I want to be there. So if I saw a story about AJ DeRosa on the snake river, you know, it was like, I, I want to be around these guys. So, um, that, that was a big, big, big pull. Yeah. That's awesome. That's a, well, let's, uh, let's jump into believe we got a few other things, you know, we, you mentioned, um, you know, Vern and Lee. I mean, those are some people I'd love to dig into a little more if we have time, but you know, I want to take it to Belize because you eventually moved uh, over there. I'm not sure how many years it's been now, but, um, you know, it's funny because I'm actually t- planning a trip to head out there and I didn't even really think about it until it was like, oh, actually I'm interviewing uh, Laureate this week. So it's working out great because I'd love to talk about, you know, just Belize, the fishing and, and the area. Can you just maybe take us there to somebody who's never been there and talk about why, you know, why it's special, why you decided to move there? I was thinking about that this morning, actually. I first came here with Gary Beebe, my husband at the time, in 1992. And um, Turn of of Flats gave me a comp trip to come out, check it out. And uh, I just just fell in love with this country. And then he later came back and um, under the Nature Conservancy and a job from Perk Perkins, who lined it up, um, ended up training, um, they called them the net fishermen down in Punta Gorda. And that's you know, the Garbutt brothers, I consider now some of the best um, saltwater fly fishing guides in the world, bar none. They've been all over the world. Um, they have a billionaire that they've been able to work with. And uh, hmm. so they've been able to go all over the world. And, and then they have their own little marina down there in PG. And it's just, it, they're fabulous. And I'm on Ambergus Key, and I came here in 2009, and I was recruited. There were actually 175 men that applied for the job at El Pescador for fishing director. And I was in traffic in Salt Lake City, and my buddy Carter Andrews calls and says, Lorianne, and I'm like, hi, Carter. And he's like, you know, there's a perfect job for you in Belize. I'm like, not doing it. And um, so how how's Heidi, how are the kids? What's going on? And anyway, so um, after a couple months, I was actually working in Tucson at the time. I had gone back um, to nursing because I thought, well, I'm not going to be able to be a fishing guide forever. So I, mm-hmm. I jumped right back into it and worked at St. Joseph's with an absolutely awesome team. And they actually pretty much did an intervention and said, what are you thinking? go check it out. So I did and I came down and then the guides were like, what the blankety blank, you know, we're going to have a chick for a fishing (laughs) director. And so I said, Hey man, I'm not going to come down here and change my whole life unless I know we can get along. And we really made a pack right then and there. And it took me a few days. I kind of hung out and uh, I said, okay, doing it. And uh, came down here actually with my 22 pound Manx cat. (laughs) What he, he's buried at El Pescador. And, um, you know, we just, we really, I worked six years there and, um, it, and I feel really blessed that I'm friends with everybody, all the fishing guides here on the island and actually in the country of Belize, which is very small. It's only 350,000 people. So it's a very small place. Um, used to be British Honduras very easy to travel and of course all this COVID and everything. Um, Belize jumped on board with gold standards. So now hotels and tour operators, we all have to, we applied. And I think I was telling you earlier, I felt like I was going to nursing school all over again because I, I submitted a 47 page document for my gold standard. <laughs> I mean, you know, it was like, wow. no kidding. they wanted to see pictures of all sanitation and how we clean the boats after we have guests and how we wipe them down. And when you come here, it's very clear. So, you know, to put a traveler, you're going to be coming down here. You download an app, not more than 72 hours before you come. And um, it's nice if you've already had your PCR test. If you haven't had a way to get tested, you get tested at the airport for $50 U.S. cash. They also do a random testing sometimes. So that, that could happen. Uh, getting through immigration and customs is usually less than, you know, right around an hour. 
And then you hop right out there and there's tropic air or Maya air. And it's a 16 minute flight to San Pedro, or you could take a ferry, which is an hour and a half. Um, so you'd have to take a taxi to a ferry terminal. But then anyway, you get to San Pedro and every it's English speaking. Um, Belize is primary English speaking. Used to be British Honduras, as I mentioned. And But up north, you hear a lot of Spanish and down south, you hear a lot of um, more Carib and uh, a lot of some Garifuna and um, Creole. So, you know, you get kind of a, more of a mix up. And um, I, the fishing here it, around Amargus Key is, I think, world class, of course, mm -hmm. because I mean, we have bone. I just saw amazing bonefish this morning when Panga and I were making our, our beach walk. I checked my boat and all, and we have a north coming in right now. It's really beautiful, but huge bonefish, and I expect that they'll be tarpon out there this afternoon. So nice. we have um, bones, permit, and tarpon year round. And our resident tarpon are probably 30 to 6, you know, out, well, all the way up to like 15 pound to, you know, I'd say a nice size tarpon out on Savannah Flats would be 30, 40, 50 pounds. And then in mid-May, uh, the migratory tarpon come in and they're big girls up to mm -hmm. 200 pounds. And I mean, if somebody wanted to catch a world record tarpon, I would definitely be here. Yeah. Um, and and we have satellite. We work with Bonefish Tarpon Trust, and we it's six thousand US for a satellite, and and the tarpon has to be over eighty pounds, and then you jab this giant satellite thing into the fish, and and we still really don't know where these fish are coming from, but we think uh, we think they kind of hang out around here, like they go up Blues mm -hmm. River, and but they're not Gulf fish. Um, we 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 pretty much are clear that they're not gulf fish they're right. different yeah so anyway and so anglers show up here i've had people who've never even fly fish and they go out and they catch bonefish you can see lots of big schools of maybe two three pound fish and then you know you can see cruisers bigger fish you can get out and wade if you want to do that uh, we primarily have the east breeze that comes from the barrier reef and then if it's if it's windy then you know we zip on over to the other side of the island and fish and um, the wind and tide really do, and sun, really, that's the formula for the day, you know, what's going on. And so you could say, yeah, man, I want to go slam today, which is catching a bonefish permanent tarp in a day. Um, you know, but you need sun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um you know anyway i love it and I, I i love being here and i've been here i usually go back to montana in the summertime but i stayed here uh this whole year and it's it's been nice uh belize is definitely taking covid very seriously people wear their face face masks it's a law and there's only a certain amount of people allowed in a building we just had our curfew lifted uh, you had to be in by eight and now it's open till 10 which is nice because that gives a you know we have some fabulous restaurants here and people really like to go out and have nice dining and um so that can, that's happening again which is great oh. and um, so it's it's life is normal it almost feels like uh when i first moved here a long time ago because it's just been so you know we were a hustle and bustle place and um, so everything slowed down but the fishing is off the charts because there has been zero pressure okay well you know you just painted a picture which now i even want to go there even more because it just sounds it kind of sounds perfect you know i mean obviously you have the weather you got the fish, um, you know, and for, for me, I have done a little bit of salt water, you know, but this is going to be pretty much the first, the first big trip. Um, you know, w for somebody that's new to it, what do you tell that? Or what can they expect? Say they want to, obviously they would catch anything, but if, you know, I know a permit is one of the hard ones to catch. If we were talking about that species, what sort of advice would you give somebody that's come down for their first trip? Well, you're, that's kind of like my favorite thing to talk about, but, um, I, before I before I get into that, I just want to say one thing on returning returning back to the U.S. If you're coming from the U.S., um, we have set up all kinds of testing centers, and you can also call and have a private nurse come out and give you a test before you leave. So it's all set up. Wow. That's a huge question with everybody as well this week. You know, I've been getting back to all my guests and everything because everybody wants to know how it's all going to go, and. Um, 
So Jenna, that's how it's going to go. I haven't got back to her yet. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, and then um, for you coming down with um, the salt is really different in um, that it, you're hunting, hunting, hunting the whole time. So um, from what you wear to how you are in the boat, I can't even tell you how many times I've been yelled at by closing the cooler too loud, um, by pound, 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 wearing your shoes. So usually you jump up on a skiff uh, or a panga, which is what I have. Um, you jump up on the bow, you're barefoot, or you're wearing some kind of socks if you want to wear some um, UV socks or something. But the reason being you're, you want to be quiet, and also you don't want to step on your fly line. And so you jump up there and you rip off like 60 feet of, of line. You cast it out. You strip it back in. And you keep your rod tip in the water. If you're a beginner, just keep your rod tip in the water because you won't do a trout set. And just get used to stripping that way, big, long strips. Also keeping your um, rod and reel extended away from your body. So if you do need to do a big strip at some point for a permit, you've got a place to move. If you're holding it really close to your belly and you're stripping, you don't have any place to go. So keeping, so you're hunting, hunting, hunting. Um, the guide sees the fish. You see the fish. You're up close. They're usually looking out, you know, so they can give you a good, they could line the boat up and give you a good shot. And then they'll say, okay, Dave, 11 o'clock, 50 feet. Here comes a big school bonefish. And then you're like, I don't see him. I don't see him. And then you see them. And the difference is, you know, bonefish are called ghosts of the flats. And, and, and you see them, but then you don't see them because then they move. They're moving fast. And if they're tailing, then they're snarfing down there, eating shrimp and crabs, and their tail is sticking up out of the water. And that's a real delicate presentation. They actually have two eyelids where they can just go down there and eat and have a great time. And so that's when you want to the fly right in them. Um, if they're coming and you're getting that advanced cast, you usually want to lead them because your fly is going to go out and it needs to come through the water table to get to where they are. And usually we're fishing skinny water. I mean, it could be six inches up to, you know, three feet. So, um, you know, that kind of depends on, on what's going on. And so you really, you know, it's teamwork with your guide. It's good. It's, if you don't understand them, um, you know, I don't understand. And we work really hard on, on communication, you know, with my business, Real Belize and, and the guides. And, and I know all the guides, you know, so well. And um, they've worked with so many people from around the world. Um, they know how important it is for communication. And um, if you're a gal out there and you need to pee, you'd say, I got to pee. You know, and you could jump in. And, um, you know, if you're wearing your bathing suit or something, you know, with pants, you can jump in or they'll take you to a beach. It's important to hydrate. Yep. And then, you know, that's, that's, that's it. So you can go, you can be in fish all day long. And then other days you can go out and hours will go by. Well, like it's fishing and then yep. one thing is happening and then boom, it all, it all just happens. So it really depends. I mean, bonefish and, and uh, tarpon really like the incoming tide and we don't have a big tide here it's only like six inches to a foot but um they really respond to that and um so that's when the shrimp and crabs are coming in and they're and the water and that makes them happy and then the permit really like more of the falling tide because uh, the water's drifting off the flat and then all these crabs are exposed and and they're so fast and so they get in there and they just chomp away. But, you know, the thing is, you know, you could be bone fishing and all of a sudden here comes Mr. Permit and uh, they eat the same thing. Nice. <laughs> you know, so and, and, I've, and I remember one time at Pescador, um, Cesar, one of his, his guests, uh, he was tarpon fishing and landed a 25 pound permit on a tarpon fly with shock tippet. So, I mean, you never know what's going to happen, um, but you show up and be ready. And, 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 you know, that's, that's a big part of it. And um, I, I don't ever take it for granted. I just think it's an absolutely stunning fishery. And I think more and more, you know, it's just important to value special places like this. Exactly. And, uh, you know, exactly. Yeah. yeah. It seems like that's for me, that's why I've talked about this quite a bit, you know, but it, 
you know, and maybe this is a lot of people, a lot of people that fly fish is the journey is, you know, you do all the, the freshwater stuff and then eventually you get into the salt water and it's just for, you know, again, it's for me, I'm thinking Belize is this new place, this new place I've never been to, you know, and there must be some cool culture there. And I would love to, you know, connect to some of that and, and talk to the people, you know, I mean, just be part of the whole thing. And so for me, it's almost like that's as much about the fish of the trip as is the fishing. Is that it really you- is. Yeah. It, it, so much, it so is. And the people here are, are fabulous. Like if I get all rushed out and I'm walking around town fast, slow down, man, <laughs> slow it down, man. You walk too fast, man. That's you know, cool. it, it, it's just, it's, it's really, it's great. And we're zipping around in golf carts with our face huh. masks. I mean, you know, it's like Disneyland. Oh it, my God. It, it's great. I remember when last time when I got back to Montana, and I actually did a hand signal out of my truck because I'm so used to golfing. <laughs> but wow. um, so, the, the Mayans, the Mayans used to be here. Ton of Mayan history. Oh yeah, yeah. Could, could you? So if somebody came there, I guess here, here's a question for you. You know, so a lot of people probably go down there, just go down there to the fish. I mean, do do families ever go down there? Is this a thing where you oh, could it's actually a family place? A big, big, big family place. Um, I I team up with Suya. Um, Suya, I think it's Suya.com. And um, anyway, they do, I mean, snorkel, beach barbecue, big family trips. Um, like I said, Elise and Jay were just here with their kids and um, beach barbecue, just so much fun. Everybody goes out. You don't have to know how to do anything. You, you, they can help dive for lobster and uh, we're lobster season. I guess yeah, cool. we, we still are. So um today's groundhog day. We Oh, all right. And then lobster season closes the 15th and then uh we go into conch season. But anyway, yeah, there's SUPs or kayaks you can use. Yep. Um my good friend Jeff has a wonderful camp up north filled with all kinds of fun toys that you just go out and play with and That's and cool. you, can fish. you can be real serious or you can I mean, it's just a fun place to be. So people, do you see people that are like serious fishermen come down, maybe they get some days on the water fishing and then there's also a family situation where you can kind of do both things? Yeah, I just booked a trip with that. These guys are coming down in May and Tom wants to have his fishing days and then he's doing family days too with other things, and, but he's getting his serious fishing days in. So, you know, yeah. and everybody's happy. It's doable. <laughs> that's awesome. No, that's cool to hear. That's cool to hear. Sounds like a... A good community. So, and on the lodges uh, now, how many, because I think we are looking at the, um, I guess, is it blue horizon? Uh huh. Yes. Yeah, so we're, we've been, you know, talking to them. I, who, how many lodges are down there? Well, I, in, in all of Belize, I really don't know. Um, There's a lot. There's quite a few. There, there are quite a few. There are, you know, there are lodges that are just for fishing, but most of the lodges are, are, um, you know, just, beautiful lodges and beautiful places you know you can go make chocolate oh right like the fishing that, that thing you probably don't realize yeah the fly fishing is actually not the, the everybody doesn't go there just to fly fish right not everybody but it certainly has been i mean there's so much history here i mean in the 60s vic Barothi came to belize river lodge i think one of the original lodges also el pescador is probably 50 years old now um lincoln westby who started uh, Blue Horizon? He, I met him from a fly rod reel article. I, I hmm. met him in 1998, and I said, "Oh my God, I want to!" And so I brought a group of real women, <laughs> <laughs> and we went out to Little <laughs> Key, and it was, uh, it was really rough. I mean, I think I, I lost a few clients there, and I also had lifelong clients from it. But it was, you know, I remember it was just pretty rough conditions. And now it's all a different deal. But Lincoln has definitely been my mentor for permit fishing. And oh, cool! Yeah, oh, I, I just, I he's taught me the world. You know, is Lincoln the kind of, when you see those photos? Is he the Blue Horizon, like the face of Blue Horizon? Yeah, he is. He's got that yeah. big belly that he laughs, and it's just so cute. And he's just adorable. And his wife Pearlene, they just, they're you know, they're the real deal. And cool. uh, he taught me things like, you know, why would you wear your earrings out when you're fishing? Because yep the permit see that you know and, and they see that reflection and keeping that low profile you know you're mm. talking about mm -hmm. you, know, you certainly don't want to do the big overhead cast you want to keep things really low so they don't see you know they're used to birds coming down and that kind of thing so what is that like when you make that so you're making that cast i guess you're kind of sometimes keeping it low as much as you can 
you know, what if you're not a great caster? You know, I mean, can you catch fish if you're, or, and, and there's one question, the next one to be, what do you do to get ready for the casting? Well, um, it is really helpful to practice and it is, it is nice. It's nice if you could double haul, but I would say the majority of our anglers that come down here to fly fish don't. I mean, uh, I think that if you have a good, a good 30 foot cast, you're in the game. And um, so the thing you have to remember from fishing is on a skiff, standing on a skiff versus say wading in the river is that whole trajectory is really different. So, <laughs> excuse me, you're going to want to, like I said, rip off a whole bunch of line off your reel, cast it out, strip it back in, and I like to hold, hold on to the fly. Don't dangle the fly because it'll get caught on something. Hold on to it with your two fingers. And then you have, I like to use long leaders, at least 10 feet. And um, so for bone fish, we're going to be tapered down to 8 or 10 pounds. For permit, we're going to be tapered down to 16 or 20 pound. For tarpon, we're going to have class tippet if you want, 18 to 22 sec inches in there. But you're going to have bite tippets. Generally, I like to use 40, 50, 60. You definitely don't need 80 unless you're going to be out there for the big girls. And um, so... You, what you'll do then is um, there's going to say, okay, Dave, here's that cast. Oh, now it's one o'clock. Okay, so now it's maybe a backhand cast, or you, know, you have to wait for him to turn the boat. And because um, ideally they're going to want to give the right hand caster that 11 o'clock, that 10, 11 o'clock shot, left hand caster that one or two o'clock shot. So um, you're not casting over the boat, you're casting over the water. And, um, so usually I, I like to think first cast for speed and that's what jams up everybody is that first cast because you, you've been practicing and you're, you're pretty good at 40 to 60 feet. And then, but that first cast jams everybody up because you, people open up and so yeah. you just really get a really good, hard, fast stop and really load that rod as fast as you can and feel it. That's going to give you confidence, you know, versus just opening it up and going, what the heck, you know, I, I can't load this rod for the life of me. So, you know, starting with your rod tip low, you know, forget 10 and two, you know, yeah. start with your rod tip basically in the water, flip it up there hard, get some line out there, shoot some line out, get your next cast going and then get that one to the fish. So ideally first for speed, next accuracy to the fish. Sometimes it takes three casts, you know, but if it's windy, um, you yeah. know, the same thing. You're just, you, the best thing to do is like slow it down because everybody likes to get all rushed out in the wind. And that's really when you want to, you know, help, have the wind help you and slow it, slow it down. So I, I think um, practicing and, but that short cast is, is really kind of important. And so, you know, we, we have the classic little, um, what is it the saltwater pickup? And mm -hmm. so you know it's a it's a roll cast. So okay, here come the fish. Throw your your beginner. So throw your fly in the water, and then you'll get better. You know you could swing yep. it and realize it, but throw your fly in the water. Do a roll cast. Now that's going to help you with your load when you pick up, and then you're going to shoot it out there, and that that's going to really help you. And so that roll cast I think is 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 really helpful. How does, and so, I, and I'm picturing again, so I've, I'm holding the fly. It's like, okay, the fish are coming. You, you toss in the water and the roll cast, are, is this a front roll cast and then you pull back and then you cast or is, or is this more, explain the roll cast a little more. So yeah, it's a front, it's a forward roll cast. So you're just, you know, the fish are coming. They're, they're not going to be here quite yet. Their fish are coming. So fly in the water, roll your fly line out, you know, just to, to get it going, yeah. pick it up. Now you're doing a water load, really, you know, gotcha. so picking it up off the water. Now you're really going to have a loaded rod to help you shoot some line out. Yeah. As, as opposed to just throwing your fly in the water and then going back on your back cast, loading it and shooting. Right. It. Right. Yeah. That's so, you know, then you kind of get used to kind of get used to it. And uh, you'll notice that all those little, all those little things help. And now let's take a quick break for a word from our sponsors. 
In today's world of mass-produced products, Stonefly Nets has reclaimed the tradition of handcrafted care with their custom wood landing nets. Stonefly starts the design process by selecting wood for the handle based on a number of key factors including grain pattern and depth, but they don't stop there. This piece of art is accentuated by strips of hardwood that complement and accentuate the handcrafted handle. To be honest, I have never been a huge net guy, mainly because I didn't feel like my uh, old collapsible net was easiest to use and was not easy on the eye, if you know what I mean. The Stonefly uh, net not only looks beautiful, but has high quality netting that is easy on the fish and will last for years to come. Stonefly's goal is to create a unique custom classic wood net that's second to none and can be customized for a little extra touch. For Ethan, the founder of Stonefly Nets, fly fishing has always had a traditional feel going back to fishing the three-weight bamboo rod with his great-grandmother. When Ethan designs a custom net, it's his hope that others will create amazing lasting memories for years to come. Please head over to wetflyswing.com stonefly to get your custom net now. That's wetflyswing.com stonefly, S-T-O-N-E-F-L-Y, to get started right now. What's worse than a day with no bites? A day without coffee, or even worse, a day with bad coffee. Thankfully, that isn't the case for us. With more than 40 years of experience in coffee, the Angler's Coffee team roasts a full range of coffees with one goal in mind, delivering excellent coffee to every single angler. That's why they've released a brand new coffee subscription program made just for you. Just visit anglerscoffee.com. Provide your coffee preferences, your mailing address, and how much coffee you drink in a week, and they'll take care of the rest. There's no obligations or hidden fees, just great coffee delivered to your front door. And I've been using and loving Angler's Coffee, and I am a coffee fanatic and have tasted uh, bad coffee for sure. Angler's Coffee is definitely great coffee. I've been enjoying it. Um, it's as good, to be honest with you, it's as good as, as I've had <laughs> that I can remember. And that's pretty awesome saying uh, since I drink a lot of coffee. So uh, join me in supporting a great company who supports great coffee, fly fishing, and conservation. As part of Angler's Conservation Alliance, Angler's Coffee donates a portion of every sale to help conserve and protect our wild natural habitats and fish species. Right now, they're raising money for Soul River, which brings veterans and inner city youth out into the river to teach conservation, fishing skills, and more. Right now, you can get 20% off your first subscription box or gift box. Simply use the code WETFLYSWING at checkout. Just visit anglerscoffee.com and get 20% off your first subscription or gift box using Wet Fly Swing at checkout. That's anglerscoffee.com. Okay, now let's get back to the show. Well, and part of the struggle is, and I, and I know it's just from years of, uh, you know, single hand steelhead fishing, right? Eight weight. I mean, I, I, I think more, this is more of a nine, 10 weight game, but the heavier rod, right? Heavier gear, I guess that's something to get used to too, right? Well, actually good, good point. Uh, no, your eight weight is your friend and, oh, okay. uh, and, and here in Belize, I mean, we're using six and seven weights for bonefish. Oh, wow. And they're lighter and fun, you know. I mean, we're not talking about huge fish here. We're talking, you know, average fish two to six pounds for a bonefish. And so, you know, you're used to landing big steelhead. You know, this, this, they're fast though. These fish are fast. So you want good reels. Um, you you don't want to burn up on a, you know, you really want a nice drag on your reels. And um, so then, yeah, six seven weights for bone. Uh, I use my eight weight. Uh, you know, pretty much for everything. Um, a permit rod as well if i'm in conditions where i feel like i'm not i want something a little more then i'll grab my nine or ten uh rarely use a 12 only if i decide i'm going out to long key you know for big tarpon then i would i break my 12 for that just because you might run into a beast so <laughs> you know you want to be prepared but yeah. The rest, yeah really um and and something you're comfortable with you know and we have we have a lot of you know, I have two businesses. I have real women fly fishing adventures and then I have real Belize. And so we have a lot of women come down. Like in the next two weeks, I have my fifth annual women's permit quest. So these women, these are, I, I'm just happy to tell you, there are a lot of strong women anglers in the world now. And it's so exciting. Dione, she can't come because she's in Scotland. She was going to be here for two, two weeks and hopefully now she'll be able to come in May for Tarpon Quest, but she won the Scotland women's um fly fishing mm. 
anyway, you know, just, just great. And, and, um, you know, I, I've been talking, Christina, she, she's in Livingston. She works for Sweetwater Travel. She's coming down with her friend, Vicki. And, and she was saying kind of what you were mentioned early on when we were talking is, um, she almost feels kind of guilty for leaving, you know, like, Oh boy, you know, is this just the weirdest time in the world? Yeah. But traveling, you know, from receiving people on this end, and, and as we're here, you know, it just it's, kind of dialed in. It's pretty dialed in, yeah. I mean, it's pretty dialed in, and so um, you know, testing on all sides, keeping everybody healthy, and um, that's great. So just moving, moving, moving with it, and yeah, yeah, happy. To you're that. you're you're definitely preaching uh, to the choir, Laureate, because. Uh, you know, I've talked about this quite a bit, but I've got two uh, girls, they're six and eight going on, you know, seven and nine. And it's my, I'd love to get down there with, you know what I mean? With the family and have them get it, experience that. I mean, obviously they're young and stuff, but I love the fact there's new, you know, women coming up through the thing, you know, and I know you've talked yeah, to yeah, them. Yeah, was just saying the same thing, you know, her husband's a fishing guide and their kids are skiing, you know, and everything. And she's in her happy place right now. But she just said, you know, and I really appreciate her, her transparency because it's, you know, we've never been through this before. No. Before. So, you know, we, ha we have to talk through it and, um, you know, and, and just say, okay, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, so so luckily we do have communication. That's good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I hear you. I hear you. It's uh, I think you know, in this day and age, obviously, I mean, Belize is is pretty connected. It's not like you're going down to some, you know, can't, you don't have any communication with the outside world, right? I mean, this is you know, <laughs> so it sounds like you feel pretty comfortable about people traveling, and obviously, people have been doing it. Do you do you think this year? Um, does this look like a good travel year? Obviously there's still going to be some COVID issues, but does it feel good? Do you like people are going to kind of, more people are going to keep coming? Yeah, I do. I, I think, um, uh, people are going home and, and telling their friends how, you know, great it was. We're really busy in May. Um, I think, you know, the more vaccine, you know, help, uh, definitely builds everybody's confidence. Um, you know, especially with the elder population that really like to get out and travel. So, um, also, you know, I think people are just, you know, the natives are restless and, you know, I could really feel it on this end booking fishing trips, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, they could just really feel it like, boy, people need to dream right now. They need to know. And isn't it cool that we're bringing more people into fly fishing right now? And, um, I'm ecstatic about that. I just signed up with Temple Fork Outfitters as an ambassador for them. Oh, wow. Yeah, no, I'm very excited. And uh, I was talking with the team and I said, boy, you know, it, you know, what happened with sales last summer? And they said, just off the shelves. And uh, I said, that's what I thought, because that's what's happening with our schools. Um, and we're just seeing and so and we're seeing, you know, people sign up for trips and way up into 22 if they need to. But um you know, I just, again, I think keeping that dream alive and, and sharing something, I just, oh, I just signed up a woman this morning. She's in LA and she's never fished before, but she's going to come join us in our Ennis, Montana school this July. And hmm. uh, we have little individual cabins for everybody and it's right on the river, you know, and I mean, it's fun stuff. And then next yeah. thing you know, it's July and you get to do it. So <laughs> exactly. No, you got it. I think you got the best of both worlds for sure. I think that's that's a pretty cool way to do it. Kind of have the both, you know, the Western kind of Montana stuff. And then, you know, when it gets cold, head out to the, uh, to the, yeah, no, I don't wimp anymore in the cold for sure. Oh, right? that's yeah. Yeah. Are you, so are you out? So are you don't, you're not planning on going back. You're, you're kind of down there hundred percent now. No, I go, I'm going to go back uh, for June, July, August and September. Oh yeah. Cool. Next, yeah. And I have a bird dog, um, Panga. She's an English setter. Um, she actually comes from uh, Lee Perkins line. Annie, oh, wow. Annie told me that um, her her aunt won best field trial, I think, last summer, and Trace, her grandfather. So anyway, she loves to bird hunt, and, and she points all the ground doves here. And uh, so I have to give her her time in September and uh, probably tr maybe squeeze one. Well, no, I need to be back here in October, so she's yeah. going to She's going to miss pheasants, but too bad. Gotcha. <laughs> we'll get huns. No. And again, this is one of those things where I love it. There's so many topics I'm interested in, uh, the bird hunting. I've, well, but, you know, uh, sporting yeah. life. The sporting life is yeah. a fun life, isn't it? It's a fun life. Yeah, it is. Yeah. That's that's the thing. It's whether it's bird hunting or 
deer hunting, you know, you name it, it's outdoors. I think that's what's, what's amazing. Um, Hey, I want to talk just quickly. You mentioned, we talked about the gear, so I'm glad you mentioned the eight weight. Can you run down just through a little bit or, or maybe direct us to, uh, you know, if somebody was going to put their gear list together, what they need for down there, kind of including, you know, clothing and everything, where would you, what would you tell somebody? Well, being a nurse, I just go head to toe. So hat with nice brim, brown, um, you know, really good polarized sunglasses. You don't want to come with gray, you know, so brown or green mirror, blue mirror is fine. Um, definitely not gray. And good sunscreen and layers, um, you know, so bathing suit. And then uh, I like to wear baggy shirts and uh, baggy pants. And um, you can wear your sandals to the boat. Back, you know, you're going to have a little pack, a little backpack of things. Um, you're going to want to have, you know, your phone, your camera, whatever you want to have in that department, your water bottle, your personal gear, your little stash. If you want to drink beer, you know, in the daytime, you need to let um, let us know ahead of time, and then we put that in the cooler for you. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, lunch is there. And then, um, you know, for your, your tackle, you know, you're, it, being with the fishing guide, they're going to help you with everything. So, um, but if you want to become independent and, and whatnot, you ask, ask for help, um, ask for teaching, but you're going to want to have leaders, um, set up 10 feet down to, um, I'm, you know, 10 pound and a couple other packs down to 16 pound, a couple other packs down to 20 pound. And then you're going to want to have a couple uh, tarpon leaders with 40 pound shock. I think it'd be fine. Mm-hmm. And um, sometimes people like to use straight 40 fluorocarbon or something like that and not use um, a tournament test piece in there. And, and that's totally fine and extremely effective. You have to be super careful because if the fly line will break at like 30, 35 pounds. But if it wraps around your foot, you have to be super oh. careful. You know what I mean? So um, anyway, so then you're just in, in a, a box of flies. You know, you're going to want to have some um, gotchas. Uh, so Christmas Island specials are, are rice and beans here. And mm-hmm. A lot of them in size um, eight and size four for permit you know we like to use avalons and we like to use spawning shrimp peterson's mm-hmm. spawning shrimp type thing squimps um tarpon toads are great we like white we like black death we like purple so a little variety and um and we supply we at real Belize, a little commercial here actually supply yeah. uh, supply great. supplies for our guests and oh, i'm cool. Yeah, I know. And I have an expert uh, fly tire. He's an f- amazing retired fly fisherman. Just so happens to love to tie flies. <laughs> so um, it's great because I just opened up my fly shop. And actually, today's my first real day. I, have to, I haven't been keeping hours. I've been, you know, kind of lazy about the whole thing. It's a small shop. But now I, I'm officially open from 10 to 2 <laughs> um, on Tuesdays and Thursdays and Saturdays. So people can come in and check out these flies and I have fly lines and terminal tackle and really building a community. And that's why I wanted to get together with TFO as well, because I, you know, I just, I like the fly shop community. It works for me now. When I was younger, I was always guiding and I hated, I hated it. And uh, I tried it. I lost a lot of money in Victor, Idaho, <laughs> but um, you know, it, it's now, now it works out great. And um, yeah, so, yeah, I, I like it. That's cool. No, and again, it sounds it sounds like the perfect place. Um, I was curious, you know, it's, you know, obviously there's a lot of lodges down there. Do people, um, I mean, is it one of those things you can at all like DIY if you're going down there, if you just wanted to? Oh, on so many levels. And I actually want to get this up on our website because I have some local guys now coming around. They've been building these places. So, you know, some places are super cute for 50 US a night, totally clean, you know, wonderful, super cute little casitas and stuff, uh, other places, a hundred dollars a night. Um, I use Pelican reef villas, um, for our trips. And, um, that works out really well for us because, um, everybody gets a really great breakfast before they leave. And, and it's a beautiful, beautiful property, you know, that's high end property. So, you know, that's up to like two fifty a night kind of thing. Um, but there are Airbnb places and everybody's had to go through that gold standard 
process. So you'll always see, you know, signs outside now and all that kind of thing. So, um, but on all, all budgets, all budgets, you want to come in and do the fanciest, fanciest, no problem. If you want to come down and you have a limited, like when I first came down here with Gary in 92, our budget was 10 us a day. Nice. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's so cool. So, um, Anyway, you know, but no, really, there are yeah. there's some really nice places it's and doable. very safe, and and everybody's so appreciative of the tourists now. You know, I mean, San Pedro was probably a little uppity um, because you know we've just had a great, 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 great um, amount of tourism for a long time, mm -hmm. and everybody kind of you know thought, oh, but really, I, um, people are so appreciative of. Somebody like you coming down and taking your time. Um, yeah, I'm kind of thinking like, I love the lodge idea, obviously. You know, the lodge is amazing, you know, doing that. And there is some questions there on the fishing, you know, how, you know, but for me, I think like I would love to have a good chunk where I can just go and like you said, get a $50 little place and just kind of go in and, and disappear. Cart. Yeah, and you and you rent a golf cart. Yeah. The week, and there are just tons of do-it-yourself stuff. And um you know, Belize has been kind of you know inconsistent on on what's legal, but we do have a fishing license with Coastal Zone, um, and uh, you know you could zip up to the North Island. You can go. I mean, there are so many different places. It's really fun, and you know you go out with a guide to get the lay of the land yeah. and um, how to fish it, and then put it together, and it's just super fun. There you go. Where would you direct somebody if, again, they had more questions on, you know, obviously the lodge, you know, idea they can go to real. Is it realbelize.com? R-E-E-L Belize, B-E-L-I-Z-E dot com. Yeah, perfect. So they can go and there. To, to, yeah. yeah. For all We have all kinds of Belize travel. It's all up to date there. Um, everything about. Uh, yeah. So happy, happy to, so you to can, get anybody who has questions. Okay. And then, and then is that, and then if somebody just had more specific stuff on the, the do it yourself, is there any other recommendation or would you just recommend they connect with you? Um, you could connect with me and I'm happy to give you uh, references. Um, you know, a lot of people yeah. would love, I, uh, my friend Jeff Spiegel has Kyle Francis farm and fly super cool place. He's partnered with boat SUPs and, uh, and they're just, they're doing a super cool camp up there. They don't have AC, but they have, you know, just access. You're just up there yep. and you go on an SUP or, you know, a little skipper they have, you That's know, you, you could just go have a few days up. You could do a San Pedro time and, and then you can go up there and do a camp time. You know, I think that's really great. That's so, perfect. Anyway, happy, happy to help people plan because, you know, I like to do that myself. So um, happy, happy to, to help with ideas. Okay. Um, and uh, I had a few other questions I want to note before we get out of here. But, um, yeah, I mean, just anything generally about the trip. I mean, it sounds like you fly in. That's pretty straightforward. Obviously, there's a few more steps with COVID getting tested. But you get there, you do a short flight over to the lodge or wherever you're going, and then you're there. I mean, once – you know, in the morning, take us that when you, if you're going to a lodge, you know, you're there, take us to the first morning. What, what's, what's that look like in the first day? And so, you know, what happens is you fly to San Pedro and then whomever is going to, if you're staying in a hotel, if you're staying, whatever, you'll be picked up by a taxi. They take you to your lodge. If you're staying at a lodge, they have, um, they pick you up, take you to the lodge. And then, um, if you're if you're already aligned with um, an outfitter, usually you know if you're at a lodge, you're going to get a fishing orientation. Um, it's going to talk about the fishing, and most everybody leaves at seven o'clock from the dock, and it's an eight-hour day. Coming back at three o'clock, um, it's a lot of time out there in the sun, and it gets really glary in the afternoon. So seven to three, if fishing and the tide is different, you know you might get together with your guide. And they might decide, you know, they want to leave at 6 or 6.30 um, and come back a little earlier. If you run into weather, you might, um, you know, add on another day and come back earlier. That kind of commu communication goes on with your guide. Um, and then, you know, you get oriented to whatever the meal plan is and, and what's happening there. And uh, most everybody, you know, no matter where you are, the concierge service, from the $50 room up to, you know, the $500 a night room 
they're, they're everybody is on the same page. And so you're just going to get easy, easy questions answered. I mean, should be before you come, but you know, when you're here and you just, you know, want to know where something is, Secret Beach is a fun place. And a lot of, a lot of people like to go there and party. And um, so you drive the golf cart up and you feel like you're lost in this place. And then you jump out. And I used to ride my bike up there. When I was in Pescador, I used to ride my bike up there and fish for permit all the time. But now there's a bunch of little um, tiendas all around. And, you know, you can have a foo-foo drink and walk out there and play volleyball in the water. And, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it's so it's, it's changed a lot. And, every, you know, I mean, everybody has cell phones here. There's all kinds of communication. I have 138 stations on my television. Um, you know, so <laughs> It's a little different now that, you know, traveling like in the 90s versus now, you know, because because everybody does have cell phone. Everybody does have, you know, Internet everywhere. And yeah. um, so communication is definitely um, connected. Everybody's connected. Right. Yeah. That's cool. OK. Um, you know, uh, and this is just hidden on to me because I always think of, um, you know, again, I've got the two girls. I'm hoping that they're going to, you know, they already are doing some fly fishing, but. You know, you, you have this, uh, you know, the real women fly fishing. I'm interested in how that got started. Can you just take us back to what that's all about and how, how you, um, you know, you got into that? Oh, sure. Um, so I, I went to the Orvis Guide Rendezvous and, and then I started um, a women's fly fishing school in the Jackson Orvis store. And I had three women, one from New York, one from Texas and one from Jackson. And. Anyway, we had a great time, and I told Lee, I said, you know, Lee Perkins, my buddy, I said, you know, wow, I had three women for my uh, women's fly fishing class, and then they each went and spent $2,000 at the store. And then Lee goes, <laughs> wow, lovely, why don't you come out to Manchester? <laughs> <laughs> well, so then we started, and I brought my friends, Kim Keeley, oh, we just had a great group, of Christy Ball, we had a great group of of gals that came out and um, partnered with uh, Nancy Zakon and Gwen. And we ended up having a school, uh, the first Orvis school for women um, in 94, I guess. And we had 27 women from all around. And um, then the first thing they said the last day, you know, is I want to go on fishing trips. And I said, me too. And so Real Women Fly Fishing Adventures was born right then and there. And I partnered with my friend Christy Ball, who's uh, just passed away, unfortunately, the last year, but just brought so much joy to this world. And um, so we just ended up, we just lasted, we just said, hey, we want to go fish um, the Ruby River in Montana. We want to go to the Bahamas. We want to go to Belize. And so yeah. <laughs> we want to go to Argentina. We want to go to Alaska. So we just started going all over. And um, with that actually grew now. And I hope some of you guys are listening because, I mean, it's been 25, 30 years. And, and, they, and so many of these women are now are just such strong anglers and they do their own thing and they go off and they have their own groups now. And lifelong friendships have been made. And um, and I, I'm not kidding you. And, and, and what's happening for me right now is I have Chloe, who's in Montana, who's 30, and she's running Real Women Trips for me. I have Jess McLaughlin who's in Montana. She's going to be writing a Missouri trip for me this year. And so how cool is that? Yeah. You know, I, I mean, it used to be for me just having to do everything and just like, okay, everybody. And now I'm, I mean, it's there. Yeah. I mean, there are just a ton of great women. We have a steelhead trip with Mia uh, and oh, Rachel cool. is going to go on and we're this August that's sold out in 24 hours. Wow. We make it to the website. Yeah. Um, that was off our newsletter. And uh, so, no, it's. Um, That's so cool. It, it is. It is cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're. You've laid the, you know, I mean, obviously you've been, I just think of another thing that's come out and I'm sure you're, you, you've heard of, but the um, United Women on the Fly. Oh yeah. They're great. Heather's been doing such a yeah, good Heather. job. Yeah, Heather. Yeah. And I mean, just wonderful. And, and a real, there have been lots of, um, women clubs kind of thing that have come up over the years, but you know what their energy is just really great and um, inspired by, you know, the group itself. So yeah, I, I mean, yeah, there we go. And done magazine. I mean, come on. Artemis. I mean, I, I could go on and um, it, it's just, it's so we're living in a really good time right now. So um, even though it's been weird 
there's a lot of good stuff coming out of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, no, I United Women. I've had uh, Jen on the podcast and Heather and, uh, you know, and, and I actually had Joan Wolf on, which was really exciting uh, for my, uh, the hundredth episode. <laughs> We're almost at 200 now, but I wanted to celebrate on a hundred and I had Joan on and it was an amazing interview. She actually, I always joke about it, but she gave me relationship advice at the end of the show, which was really funny and, and awesome. But um, she is so too, I just love her. Yeah. Uh, you know, because she's just, I watched, I don't know if you watched, um, oh, when the CBS did a deal last summer with her. And, oh, no. Oh, God, it was great because she just, I can't remember the name of the anchor man right now, but just totally lines him out and says, I didn't realize you were going to be a difficult student. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> I mean, she's just, uh, just I, I spent great. two weeks with her. Oh, I, cool. Oh, you know, yeah, no, I, I, she came out and then I asked her a long time ago if I could audit because I, I audited everybody, you know, Mel Krieger, Lefty, Joan, because I wanted to be able to teach everybody's style. And Oh, wow. So I hung out with Joan and we, and actually we ended up drinking champagne on Lee's anniversary of his death. And uh, we ended up drinking champagne and two o'clock in the morning, she gave me Lee Wolf's dofold underwear. Ah. <laughs> Underwear. I have his long johns. No way. <laughs> no way. I have a <laughs> well, joke. I got him. She said, you're tall. She went and got him because she was like, what am I going to do with all this stuff? That's and, hilarious. So so Lee, so Lee, Joan Wolf gave you uh, Lee's uh, underwear, boxer shorts. Yeah, because I'm tall. I'm six feet oh, tall. Oh, that's amazing. That is a classic. Have you ever told that story before? Is that ever is that, is that on I air? Have- Around a campfire, maybe. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So I got something to do maybe for the podcast. First time ever on a podcast. That's good. I um, you know, part of this thing that I'm doing here, and that's why it's great to talk to you, is I'm not only teaching, right? We've talked a little bit about Belize and hopefully some people will get into it, but also the history thing. I love, you know, connecting to Joan and, and Lefty. And I'd love to do a whole episode, you know what I mean? Find the person that could, you know, talk about Lefty and and just because these people, you know, I mean, I slowly we're obviously losing some of these people, and I, I want to. I can want... all live now and look at Stu Aptis in his nineties and oh yeah, in his nineties, and I mean, we have some really, and I'm like, hey man, fly fishing offers longevity. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Who are those people that are still around right now? I mean, you got just like, I always think, uh, you know, obviously Flip, Flip Pout we had on. Uh, Stu Apt I haven't had on. Is there, oh. I wonder who the other few people that are kind of the, the biggest names, kind of the lefty. I guess lefty's bigger than life, but. Yeah, uh, but all these guys, I mean, they, in the day, I mean, they, they put, there were fist fights between like lefty and Mel on, on the proper way to cast. No kidding. FFI and all this was getting started and. Al Kite, I remember, you know, he taught me so much about casting. We were all hanging out at the casting ponds, Kathy Beck. We were just, you know, learning, but everybody had their different way about it. And everybody oh. had very, very, very strong opinion. How does a fist fight become? You mean like, I? this is the way you should cast? So that, that like, yeah, just... like, you know, you're wrong. Bang. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that that happened in San Mateo. But, um, you know, I mean, just, just step, you know, just such passion, I guess, you know, yeah. just really, uh, really delving into it. And uh, Lefty was wonderful. And he was a dear friend of mine. And I mean, he had to have his 10 minute power naps, no matter where he was. If he was in a fly shop, he would go down and lay in a dog nest. No kidding. He, he loved plain hamburgers. Uh, he re- could remember anybody's name and he knew every joke on the planet. But if he met you one time, he would remember your name the next yeah. time. And, and he was just that kind of person. And uh, just, you know, I, I these people in, in my life that, you know, Lorian, you know, you haven't listened. He's not listening. You know, I, I mean, I just, I just yeah. yelled at my whole <laughs> <laughs> That's and, so cool. And it is cool. And, um, you know, yeah. he would say, he would yell at me. And I have a friend, Trisha, who's now, I used to do a lot of casting competitions and now she wants to do it. I said, okay, well, when you get here in May, we'll do a casting competition and I'll show you some of the stuff. I said, it's not, you know, it's what Rick Hartman showed me. I mean, it's just really using the rod to get distance out there. But, you know, lefty would say, change the speed of your haul. And um, that's really one thing that he really important and oh, Joe yeah. Target and, you know, yeah. just, you know, everybody brought in their own, they brought their own thing in and they, um, so yeah, uh, 
do you feel like you've become, you know, I mean, obviously you're becoming that, that, you know, now that lefty's gone and, and you're, you know, all these women out there are probably looking up to you now, do you feel like you're kind of, um, you know, leading the way and kind of a role model for those other people? Well, I know I'm a role model and that actually gives me, um, great heart because it, you know, it, it makes me, uh, just think about what I'm doing with teaching and with the real bleeds and real women fly fishing and when our planning and what we're providing. And, uh, like I said, just having, you know, a posse of these amazing women trip leaders who now can just do stuff. I mean, it's just, it's so great. Uh, I'm having, we're doing a master class with one of my dear friends, Patty Riley on the Henry's fork, um, oh, this yeah. August, and Patty Riley was the first woman I knew that ever rode a boat. And she and AJ DeRosa brought boats down to Argentina and got the whole thing going down there. But Oh, wow. So, so Riley's, I'm my 60, I'm 63. Riley's probably a little bit older than me and they're 70 now. And so, you know, I, I we're not 90, but it is a fun time to, um, you know, just kind of, we've learned so much from other guides in the world. And so for us to be able to do like a master class together and share stuff is really, is really great. So I just see this happening more and how, I mean, it's just fun. This yeah. Is no, it's great. great. Yeah. I love that you mentioned Patty. I think Patty and Stu would both be great people to, to talk to. So, um, uh, Lorian, I think the funniest people in the world. Wait, who's that? <laughs> Riley's one of the funniest people oh. in the world. Awesome. Awesome. I, that's the exciting thing for me. I love every these conversations. It's it always get excited about like, okay, who's going to be the new, you know, guest to chat with. That's why it's been fun just chatting to you. It's been so long. I've been thinking about having this conversation. I, you know, I know a little bit of your story, but it's, it's been cool to hear it directly from you. Um, just had a, a couple more. I want to take it out. This is a, a rapid, we kind of joke about this, but the rapid fire round, I, I'm curious because you're out of guiding now, uh, you mentioned and um, but I know guiding has kind of grounded you over over your your time. How, how is that? How does that feel about being out of guiding? I know obviously it's hard to stay with it when you're a guide. To, yeah, like, yeah, no, thirty years, and um, you know my dear friend Rick Ruoff, another great great um, person to interview. Um, it, he he's still guiding in his early seventies, and he's you know Isla Murata. I'm like, oh my God. And, um, but what I love about my guiding career are, are the special friends that I have and that we've nourished that have come and gone. And that I, I love, love, love that. I love the history and the time working together. I mean, I worked with cool people. I got to work with Meryl Street for four months there. Oh, on the wow. And, you know, I worked with Martha Stewart for a week in the wind. Will, will, nice. will, I've just had a wonderful, wonderful thing. But it, it also just became clear that I want to do different stuff with my time. So actually, it's 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 a fun. It's a fun transition. Yeah. I mean, you miss some things. Like when people say, I really, you know, I want to go out with Lorianna or I want to book I want to book a trip with you. It's it's yeah. it, it, it's not easy for for me. Are there other now that you laid the groundwork, I think at the time you were the only female uh, guide. Are there other women coming up in, in Belize? No, but that's my goal. And yeah. uh, that's, that's absolutely my goal. And I know that, you know, Alex has his young girls and he, I think he's training, but I think when they start seeing me more and more and they're checking me out, I've got some of these young teenager Belizean gals checking me oh, out. Oh, nice. And when they see, you know, a woman standing on the polling platform and everything, you know, and that they're going to, it's going to start getting it's gonna cool happen. and there, it's going to happen and it's going to be great. And I can't wait. And, and I, you know, believe you women, I, I'm here like, you know, as the role model token, you know, but, um, it, I would love to see some Belizean women. Nice. Nice. What, um, <clears throat> saltwater an angler. Well, if you had to say one thing, what, what makes a great saltwater angler? Is there, is there one thing you could pinpoint? Or maybe well, you got to see the fish. It's important to be able to yeah. see the fish. You know, it's just it's well. One of the greatest my my hero is Diana Rudolph. I consider her the greatest saltwater angler. Actually, she won the Halley. She beat Andy Mill. Um, she's a mom now, and Nash is going to be four, so she's busy. But um, She's I, I, watching and fishing with her. I learned so much, and it's just all the little things. It's just the the subtle little stuff. Instead of just hurry, hurry, throw it there, get it, strip, strip, boom. You know, just really uh, 
putting a little bit more into the puzzle and uh, and, and just astute power of observation is astute because somebody like Steve Huff with just, you know, eyes that could see on the other side of the planet or like a Gordy Marin here or somebody, you know, just, uh, it just a really astute at power of observation and, um, and, and paying attention, taking it seriously. You know, if anything, I've been kind of a bully because the people along the way I've kicked in the butt, you know, and I'm like, Oh my God, you know, my friend, yeah. Aiden, uh, my bestie, she comes out and she smokes a cigar on the bow of the boat and, and she's <laughs> walking away. I'm like, Rach, you can't do it. You know, and she's an awesome angler. And, uh, but she doesn't, didn't know the salt. Now she knows a lot better, but at the beginning and, you know, she's like, Oh, okay. You know? <laughs> yeah. That's good. Definitely, no, I, I don't know if you talk with Rachel Finn, but she would definitely be some. Yeah. Yeah. I did. Rachel Finn was amazing. In fact, the Rachel Finn episode, it was a while back. It was so funny because I think uh, occasionally I get some swear words on the podcast and I, uh, I bleep some of them, but on hers, I let it go because I think she sweared like 50 or a hundred times on the show. And it was so funny because she, you know, the cigar. It, yeah. That was one of my, in fact, that episode, I've got feedback, both like negative and positive on it because some people are like, wow, that's, I, you know, that's terrible. And then I had some people said that was amazing. So I, I think she's amazing. What, what, what is it about Rachel that makes her so unique? Well, she's um, unabashedly herself. And yeah. uh, so I love that. We share that. She came up to me, you know, in the nineties and said, the witch of the East is here to beat the witch of the West. Cause we were in <laughs> casting competitions. She said, she goes, you're, she goes, I, and I was really full of myself. Um, you know, I'm had some really great gigs and being a pretty cool fishing guide in my thirties. And I'm like, you know, yeah, what do you do? She goes, I'm a fishing guide in New York. I'm like in New York. <laughs> and then, um, you know, I like, couldn't picture it cause I'm so West. No, me she, too. Oh, yeah. geez, she's very Boston. So, um, you know, anyway, the ESPN games took me out there and, um, uh, for the great outdoor games. And that's when our, we just became instant friends. She showed me, um, Adirondacks and, uh, she yeah. at that time was already a legendary fly fishing guide, the redhead Pippi Longstocking. And, and just, I, I noticed going into Fran's shop, hungry trout, where she worked, all these different places. They just really love Rachel and me. I'd love hanging out with her. We, we love fishing the same way. So it was yeah. like, and, and, and daily, I mean, we check in with each other pretty much daily. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, that's we amazing. do. I mean, just, she'll say, Oh, I just did two runs today or I had to go steelhead fishing last month I, I just saw oh my god i just caught this beautiful fish here you know i or my boat sinking <laughs> yep. whatever it is <laughs> totally <laughs> yeah, yeah no that, that, no, that it's, it's a connection i mean here she is i mean again a big storm in new york i'm in belize no it's wonderful but wonderful our friends it is that's that cool that's cool okay um yeah one more thing before we get out of here as far as resource we talked a little bit about you know uh, obviously kind of how to get started where would you direct somebody if they just wanted to learn more about um belize and you know permit bone fishing is there a anything book magazine uh, video anything you'd recommend uh for them maybe something Boy, there are some just really great books um uh passion for tarpon and oh yeah Great, great book on tarpon, uh, the bonefish book. Uh, all my books are in my shop right now. I brought them there. But, yeah. uh, you know, resources, YouTube is amazing right now. Uh, yeah. Just there's just if you if you just even scratch the surface, there's so much. Even our own Belize Tourism Board. Oh, yeah. Fabulous, fabulous resource for traveling. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll check on that. I'll put links to everything we talked about, including the. Oh, they'll love me for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. I'll do that in the. Yeah, you're um, the fly fishing, Temple what's... Fork Outfitters, all the people that I get to work with. Yeah. Yeah. yeah TFO. I just um, recently, I'll put a link to those. I, I interviewed um, the, the founder there and um, um, re remind me again, I'm drawing a total. This is a brain, a brain fart. Who's the, um, the founder of TFO? Well, there's Rick Pope. Who's yeah, the Rick Pope. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Rick Pope um, had him on, and, and it was a great episode. And um, we've had a few other uh, TFO affiliated people. So yeah, I love TFO. I love. I've been using them for a, a, quite a number of years, actually, since the beginning. So I've always loved love the TFO story. Um, so yeah, for you in the next uh, you know six months or so, anything you want to give a shout out to either your business or yourself that that's upcoming. Um, well, no, just our websites are totally up to date. Uh, realwomenflyfishing.com. 
realbelize.com, R-E-E-L on both. And um, our newsletter, our social media, we have a Real Belize Facebook page, Instagram, Real Women Fly Fishing um, Adventures also has a Facebook page. We have a newsletter I do once a week. Um, Thursday, yep, a little blog there. It just, that connection has been really amazing through this time. And so it's kept me Get me going. People, people need to hear from us. So thank you for this opportunity. Yeah, that's, that's cool. I'll put a, uh, yeah. Well, the, and on that blog, um, I guess it's just, uh, like you mentioned, realwomenflyfishing.com and, um, they can connect that. So, um, all right, Lorianne, Hey, thanks again for your time today. I appreciate, uh, you know, it's been great to connect with you and I'll, I'll keep, uh, sharing, you know, your stuff. And when people have <laughs> questions for you, I'll, I'll direct them, uh, to your website and, uh, yeah, thanks again for all your time. Thanks, Dave. Look forward to seeing you in Belize. So there you go. If you want to find all the show notes with all the links we covered, just go to wetflyswing.com slash Murphy. The Gorge Fly Shop. I want to give a shout out to the Gorge Fly Shop. You can support uh, this podcast by going to wetflyswing.com slash gorge. That's G-O-R-G-E. Or clicking any of the links uh, on our website where you see uh, the Gorge Fly Shop. This podcast gets a small commission uh, if you click through those links and purchase any products at the Gorge Fly Shop. Uh, This commission comes at no additional cost to you and is a great way to support what we have going here at the podcast. I want to thank you in advance if you've already uh, been a supporter or purchased uh, through the Gorge. We support uh, local fly shops and, and, and they support this podcast. Uh, Before we get out of here today, I want to just do a quick little summary of what we learned today. Um, from this is a focused on Belize fly fishing. So especially if this is your first trip, um, I want to touch on that. So number one, don't wear earrings. So um, for those of you who wear earrings, uh, anything shiny can spook the fish. There's a good little tip. Uh, keep a low cast on the same spook, uh, spooking thing. Keep a low cast to not spook the fish. So whatever you can do, stay low. Uh, number three, first cast for speed, second cast for accuracy to the fish. So... So basically, it's kind of like that one false cast, and then the second cast, you're hitting your spot. So try to do it in kind of one, you know, a couple false casts. If windy, slow down your cast. Another great tip. Number five, uh, for gear, definitely wear all your sun gear, hat with a brim, uh, you know, bring some gloves, anything, the, a buff, everything to keep the sun off you. Uh, Tom Rowan also mentioned this, a very important thing, um, you know, when you're out in the sun all day. And also number six, glasses with green lens. So remember, polarized glasses, those green lenses work well. Number seven, tarpon leader with 40-pound shock. So don't forget uh, the setup. If you're going for tarpon, that's a, kind of a different ball game there. And as far as uh, patterns, uh, gotchas and the rice and beans. Uh, Lori, uh, Lori Ann mentioned those two patterns. And finally, number nine, change the speed of your haul. Another thing to remember, change the speed of your haul. That's, that's a lefty tip that uh, um, Lori uh, Lori Ann pointed out today so that's it that's your uh, top nine I guess tips for Belize fishing um, uh, that is pretty much a wrap for today I appreciate you coming here and uh, hope to maybe catch you on a trip we got some big trips coming up this year hope to maybe see you on one of those or catch you online thanks for listening to the wet fly swing fly fishing show for notes and links from this episode visit wetflyswing.com 